Hello again, I'm here with another spinning demonstration that instead of um, the knitting needle demonstration, I am sh uh, showing you an actual spindle form rather than one I made up on my own. I wish I was ingenious enough to make this up on my own, but I cannot claim that credit. So anyway, today is going to be about the Bulgarian slash Romanian slash insert your Balkan country here spindle. Um, the reason why I say that is because online, especially if you go to sites like eBay, they'll give you those variety of names for essentially the same spindle, and it's not clear to me how exactly one can differentiate between them, so I'm pretty much stuck with how the advertisers label their spindles for now. So, but based on, it is some sort of Balkan esque spindle where instead of a, a French spindle it has this knob at the top which is pretty characteristic of them to in place of a hook or in place of a pigtail to catch the yarn as it spins around in your hand and then you'll have this sort of tip um, this, this type of tip usually acts as a stopper to the fiber and will be carved out here and then it's pretty elongate and end with the blunt top, uh, blunt bottom I should say. And then it will be a very lance shaped center and beca because the weight of this center is enough to act as a whorl we don't need to add an extra round piece so the whole form is very, tends to be very elongate and stick shaped rather than a stick in a wool shape that you often see with top or bottom walls, spindles, with um, suspended spindles. And so this is pretty, pretty simple looking, but for its purpose is to often be with a distaff, which is another stick object, as I mentioned before, I think I mentioned it before in the knitting needle spindle, but anyway you would have the large quantities of wool on your distaff and you would be pulling and drafting with this hand while you twiddle with this hand at the same time. And so you would have a long length of wool gradually pulled out and then you'd wind on and then you would start out and draft again and you would just keep twiddling this and the whole point of the knob is so that the fiber catches somewhat on the top but doesn't catch completely like it could with, um, like it could with the hook, so that there is still some movement for it to go over the top and have free, the freedom to twist along the length instead of being caught at the hook. And so, it would be pretty easy to whittle this. So I'm pretty sure this is whittled. It's not something turned on um, a lathe. So these would be pretty easy designs to carve out of soft enough wood and be easy to make and process and I think that also played a part in their popularity because you don't need to have it be balanced in order to make it a, have it create effective yarn. Have it create yarn effectively. Uh, that's why I'm not an English major. I don't enjoy that sort of thing. And so. I have one that's already full with wool. This is um, Blue Faced Lester wool, BFL wool in, in other words, and it is a natural gray color. I processed it from raw fleece, so unfortunately because my processing skills are amateur, this is not going to show as nicely as some people in terms of the fiber drafting, but basically what I do, regardless of the fiber, I, is I try to do long draw because I don't have a distaff, so I have to hold the fiber in my hand. And I do that with roving too and other in comb top. So I usually do it long draw with these types of hand spindles. And what I'll do is I'll just show you how to draft the length long draw. Pretty much the same thing as if it was a support spindle, except I'm moving the spindle away. So as you can see, I'm twiddling this in my hand and 
doing this pretty quickly um, only because my speed, my preferred speed is pretty fast with the long draw. And then at the end I give it a quick, I made it too long, I'll give it a quick flick where the spindle is actually suspended for like a fraction of a second. And that is where the, um, that's where the t knob at the top comes in and that's why it needs to catch the yarn so that you can do that suspension uh, for a fraction of a second and you're not dropping it all over the place like I keep doing. Um, more, more experienced spinners will not be dropping it. They'll just hold it like that the whole time and they could actually draft it while they're doing that. Now I'm not doing it as effectively as I can because I'm trying to show you guys how to do it but I swear I really am not that, that bad <laughs> with this spindle. So the reason why I don't have a distaff with this is because I do I have the stick and I try to do it do it that way but I do not have any tools to process the fleas into a quantity of wool large enough where a distaff would be useful. If you look online you'll see you have there's lots of pictures where especially the ladies that have the Romanian spindle they'll have what looks like an entire sheep on a stick and for the purpose it makes sense it was probably used as a way to keep the wool off the ground when they were dirty and not full of linoleum like we have nowadays but now I don't have a purpose for that I don't have large enough quantities of wool and I don't have the tools for that so I have just simply been doing long draw method by holding um, gently holding the locks or in some cases gently holding roving and letting it just long draw and in some cases I just have to stop and sort out the, sl um, the slubs if it's not properly processed in the beginning and that's one thing I do like about hand spindles is that I can just stop and process and loosen up the little fat parts that I don't like and then I can just wind it back on or give it a quick flick and then wind it back on. So let me just get another lock. And here is another lock of BFL. I um, process these after I attempted to wash them by flick carding with the dog brush. So I did the same thing to some Romney locks that were washed by the by the sheep herder and of course those were so much easier to, to spin uh, using the long draw method because the locks were actually clean like they were supposed to. So that's an unfortunate side effect of living in an apartment. I don't have very easy cleaning access for wool. But yeah, if you guys can hear that, you can hear the fiber catching onto the knob and uh, that's how you know it works. Yeah, this lock was a bad lock. It's all yucky. But yeah, so as you can see, um, if you have clean wool, it can actually go pretty quickly, much quicker than this. And I would say that hand spindling is not as slow as some people imagine. And then of course, if you need to just process a lot of wool in the hand, you can always just hold it and twiddle instead of flicking and letting it do the suspension. Now when you do this, the suspension, I have found that holding it at an angle where the fiber is at an angle to the tip makes for a better hold than if you try to do it above you. I've um, been able to suspend the spindle longer if I hold it at an angle like this. And which makes sense because if you have a distaff, it would most likely be at an angle like this and you wouldn't be going down, straight down. So that's one of the things I've learned to do 
And the other thing I've learned is that you can actually use them as support spindles. I found that out when I was being lazy and just didn't want to wind off my cuff. And even though these tips look really blunt, they spin pretty fast in a glass or a ceramic dish. Let me see if I can find one. So yeah, they can insert, they don't spin very long, but they do insert a lot of twist, especially if you have a cop built up. And that can be pretty useful if you want to play around with the spindle, but you find that you can't hand twirl or hand twiddle it very easily, or if you just need to stop and just figure out how to learn how to make the tip catch, you can just stick it into a bowl while you're learning and then get used to how the spindle feels in your hand and then you can graduate up to hold, actually holding it completely in your hand and flicking it around. So that way you don't break it or drop it, you just hold a bowl underneath you and then use that as a catch if need be. So that is my little demo of how I spin on the Bulgarian spindle without a distaff and the movement of the spindle would still be the same minus this drafting I'm doing, a little inchworm drafting. The movement would still be the same where you're just letting it suspend itself for um, a second or a fraction of a second. Alright, thank you. Hope you enjoy.